Trump AK-47 assassination attempt. Markets expected to react. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Ainsley Insights, brought to you by Ainsley Bullion, Ainsley Crypto, and the Gold and Silver Standard, as the Ainsley Group celebrates 50 years. Today, we welcome back Sam, who's been watching some more concerning developments with another attempted assassination involving Donald Trump. How are you going today, Sam? Yeah, good, Chris. Yeah, I was just finishing writing the economic updates, and that came um, came out in the news. So just to, just as I finished this morning, so pretty pretty shocking news once again. It again a second like it's the second mm-hmm. time. It's a pretty significant event. What might like if we look at it purely from a market's perspective, what might some of those reactions be to the event? What firstly what happened, but then also what can we maybe expect today as a result of that? Well, firstly, what happened, it was a little bit confusing. One news outlet uh, published that it was an unrelated shooting that happened to be on the golf course in in Florida, which uh, happened during the time Trump was leaving. However, they walked back that story um, pretty quickly after that, and it was uh, confirmed that someone was wandering around with an AK-47 on the golf course. In Secret Service uh, found this person and uh, it escalated into gunfire uh, to the point where this person threw down the AK-47 and ran away, was apprehended and, and then detained. So that's um, the, the story that was uh, refined. And then um, because, you know, all sorts of rumors start start spiraling out. Was it was it an assassination attempt? Wasn't it? Was it just a random drive-by shooting, for, you know, between two other people? But the FBI's come out, and the FBI has deemed it an assassination attempt. Mm. So they've met with. Um, by now, I think they've met with local police and with the U.S. Secret Service. So what that'll do to markets? Look, last time it boosted Trump's approval rating. So after the last debate, that that could be. Uh, a potential boost back up for Trump, showing that you know wherever he goes, there's someone wandering around with a high-powered rifle, uh, potentially uh, looking to take shots at him. One thing the Secret Service did right in this situation, it looks like, is they started firing at the person, not just waiting around and seeing what mm. what happens, which could have gone a, a different way. And you mentioned in the article, what's what's really interesting for us is we're sort of the first market, you know, that Monday morning phenomenon in Australia, because there's often Mm. that illiquidity that we haven't seen the rest of the world on board yet. Um, That can sometimes result in exaggerated market reactions, can't it? Yes, it can. So that, you know, that was one thing to look out for, even though uh, leading up to the weekend, we had a pretty, um, pretty spectacular week. It was pretty, uh, pretty bullish across the board. And so... Do you think that's partly to do as well? I mean, turning back to the news you were writing before this assassination attempt, it's a big week, right? Like we've got that Mm -hmm. Federal Reserve decision um, that's looming. We were talking about previously the potential for a 50 basis point cut. Um, I I think I haven't looked at the odds um, today, but they were increasing again. They sort of dropped right back of being 50 points. Now they're sort of increasing and we'd talked about the potential for that really rattling them or potentially rattling the markets if they're not expecting 50 points. Does it make it seem as if things are worse mm-hmm. than what they are? How do you tie that in? Because you've got the assassination attempt potentially here. Is Does that have an impact at all? What What's your current view? Because, I mean, we're, we're getting very close to that decision. Well, the odds you mentioned on the CME FedWatch tool, towards the end of the week, they went from 25% roughly, as I remember, all the way up to 49% odds of a 50 basis point cut. So almost exactly even, uh, just just a point off 50-50. And that is such a big change. And uh, one of the reasons is potentially that it might not be actually seen as um, overcompensation by mm-hmm. certain analysts. So... I think that was one of the big things scaring the markets about the 50 basis point cut is uh, you were right. They, it it could be seen as uh, an overstep, but now it's not being seen as that. And you think that potentially the something like an assassination attempt here could 
add to, to that. Like it, it's sort of the type of move that the Fed would make to calm markets down in that sort of scenario. Um, look, I mean, the geopolitical risks are getting uh, pretty out of control. I mean, we have so many conflicts going on with with militaries. You check the news every day. There's something new with um, Ukraine, something new with um, Israel, um, something new about uh, someone speaking about the Taiwan Strait, etc. And then we have the, um, you know, one of the presidential candidates and former president being shot at. It's becoming a regular thing. So I don't know if um, that's going to, if the Fed is going to say, look, we want to calm the world down. We're just going to cut interest rates and maybe everyone will have a lot more money and be happy and stop trying to shoot each other. <laughs> it, it might be worth a, worth a try. Um, one thing is Trump does not want them to cut too much because that's going to make Biden look better. Hmm. But um, I mean, if you look at Biden, he's he's not really he's not really doing too much. He's kind of stepped off onto the back burner. He's just kind of letting uh, Kamala do every everything now in in the limelight and try to build up her reputation. But um, will will interest rate cuts look make Kamala look better? Or will it worsen the inflation argument? I'm I'm not sure about that. Is is there anything else you're looking at? I know you sort of mentioned the small cap stocks. That's an area you've been looking at. Yeah. Um, that potentially gives some insight here into how the markets might respond. So one thing is small cap stocks, they are really sensitive to interest rate changes. These are, um, I mean, they're dependent on things like loans, which are not fixed int interest rate. They're, you know, floating rate loans. They, they have uh, budgets that are a little bit um, more difficult to deal with than these massive companies who can just uh, essentially generate billions of in billions of dollars and uh, be making no profit. So if you look at the small caps, for example, you look at the Russell 2000, that shot up with the S&P 500 and the other major indices towards the end of the week. Also, what you can see is this morning, it actually gapped up. So such aggressive buying on the small caps the candles actually have a space between them. That's a very, very bullish sign. And the fact that people are investing um, in mass into these small caps shows they're not really worried about a recession. They're not really worried about, oh, the Fed screwed up. If they do 50 now, it's just because there's going to be a recession a month or two later. They wouldn't be going after small caps typically if that was the case. So it seems to me like there's, it really is a mixed bag, but that last point particularly lends a little bit of um, hope there that we don't think it'll be a particularly you know bloodbath scenario if they do do the 50 point uh, cut it, it, assuming that everything stabilizes here from assassination attempts and, and we don't get on any more unexpected geopolitical surprises which of course could come at any moment i think that's the key thing unexpected geopolitical surprises hmm. um i mean those can just come out of nowhere but if um, investors are anything to go off, they're pretty confident and they're going for small caps and they're looking towards a 50 basis point cut as a potential positive thing and not a negative thing. Well, that's fantastic to know. And we'll be watching out that later this week and, and analyzing that more. Let's hope there's no more major surprises in the way of that. But thank you for your work on it. And I know you'll catch us up to date if anything does happen anyway. So thanks for your work on that, Sam. Thanks, Chris. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll chat again soon.